Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a linear contrast analysis in SPSS. Now, the linear contrast analysis is a very powerful technique uh, that can be applied in the context that I'm going to be talking about it today in between subjects designs, where you hypothesize there to be differences between means associated with groups that follow a linear trend from higher to lower or from lower to higher. And what's important about this is that there are times where you do an analysis of variance, a conventional analysis of variance to find some differences between means and you will not find a statistically significant effect. But if you actually do a linear trend, a linear contrast analysis, then you would find a statistically significant effect. And that's the example that I'm going to be looking at today. So if you, this is really the crux of knowing more about statistics is that's about having options and about knowing different types of techniques to test hypotheses that are somewhat similar and can give you different results, sometimes significant and sometimes not. And you have to determine which way to go based on your uh, knowledge of the data or theory. So in this fictitious case, uh, what I've got is uh, a set of data uh, that correspond to four groups. So these are between subjects design. I've got four groups. And uh, I think it's 12 people in each group. Uh, and the groups uh, have been tested uh, on a quiz. It's a, these are tutorial groups. And they were tested on a quiz for understanding of the statistics that were presented in that quiz of, that day, of the tutorial that day. The groups differ based on the amount of formula exposure that they received. So the hypothesis was that uh, if you gave people more exposure to formulas, they might learn more about statistics and therefore perform better on the test. But an alternative theory would say exposure to formulas might cause anxiety in students, and therefore they won't be able to attend to information as well because they're suffering from that anxiety. So that's what these data uh, represent, and we're going to test that hypothesis. Now, most people looking for differences between four groups on means would just do an analysis of variance, hoping to find a statistically significant effect, and then they would follow that up with some kind of post hoc test. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. Whether that's a justifiable way of doing analyses or not, is another issue, but I'm just going to pretend that that's uh, what most people are going to do. So I put quiz marks into my dependent list and I put formula exposure groups into my factor and the options I'm going to choose are descriptive, homogeneity of variance, and I'm going to plot the means. And let's see what SPSS gives us. We can see that uh, the first table we get are the means and standard deviations and we can see the very low to ex uh, very low exposure group to formulas had the highest mean on the on the quiz 22.9 versus let's say the high group which was 17.9167 so they scored a fair bit less on the quiz uh, arguably because they were exposed to the more formulas but we can also see that there's a trend as you get more and more exposure to formulas the students performed worse and worse. Uh, it's a different group, so it's between subjects designs, but those students and those groups performed worse based on, in part, the exposure they got to formulas. The uh, next table you get in analysis of variance, just like you would, uh, because I checked that as, a, as an option, is actually statistically significant. So I've rejected my null hypothesis that the variances or the standard deviations would be the same. And we can see in the high exposure group that the standard deviation is quite large. So some students really freaked out and didn't do well at all. And other students were kind of doing OK. And that's often what you, have, what you see in, ex in, in experimental groups is uh, much larger standard deviations the higher your dosage goes up or between a control group and a, and a treatment group treatment group usually has the biggest standard deviations. And so I rejected the null hypothesis. But I did not reject the null hypothesis of differences between any of the paired combinations of means. So none of these combinations of means, despite the fact that it really looks like there are differences, uh, it was not found to be statistically significant with an f of 2.5 and degrees of freedom of 3 and 44. It's p equal 0 0.071. So it's not statistically significant. But when we look at the means in terms of the um, 
trend, uh, the trend looks linear. It looks like there's a quite strong linear effect here.